Well, hello, friends. Welcome to the Ladybird browser update for May 2023. Uh, small announcement before we start. Next week, I will be giving a talk about Ladybird at the Web Engines Hackfest in Spain, and it will be streamed to YouTube. Uh, and I'll put a link to the event in the video description if you want to watch my talk. Uh, all right, so uh, let's look at what's new in Ladybird this month. Now, um, we'll start with the, <laughs> the visual fluff. So um, I made some new toolbar icons. Uh, the old pixel art stuff that we had from Serenity uh, looks great on Serenity, but on other systems, um, these kind of vector icons just fit in better. So I learned enough Inkscape to draw uh, these, and um, th this is the way the toolbar looks now. Um, <laughs> And um, another thing that's new in the app GUI is uh, Tim added a context menu for right-clicking. And I don't know how we made it this far without a right-click context menu, but now we have one. So thank you, Tim, for adding that. Um, OK, so CSS animations are new this month. Ali did a great job of implementing a basic animation mechanism, um, property interpolation, and um, the various timing functions and, and, and stuff like that. And we support many properties in animations, but not all. And there are some restrictions on how you can uh, interpolate between different values. We, we haven't implemented all of the possible scenarios yet, but, but the framework is in place. So we just need to uh, keep iterating on it. Um, and performance definitely needs work. Now that you can animate properties, you can uh, very quickly see where the layout system uh, becomes a pain point because you know it, it does a lot of relayout and when you change some of the properties. Uh, but all in all, it's great to have animations in place and um, looking forward to the architectural work we're going to have to do to make it fast. So big thanks to Ali for um, building CSS animations. Something I worked on this month was SVG as image. So basically, uh, you can now use IMG tags and just embed SVGs into web content. And this is used all over the web these days. And many, many websites are improved from this. You can see an example here below um, where um, you know big graphics and logos start to show up. And previously, a lot of website looks uh, look kind of naked in Ladybird. And uh, it's because we didn't support this. So this is this is a big thing for um, for the modern web. Um, OK, so CSS variables um, we already had, but they now work in two more contexts. So um, you can use CSS variables in pseudo elements, uh, which you couldn't before. Uh, and you can also use them in SVG presentation attributes, which uh, we learned in one of my videos this month is apparently a thing. So uh, that is um, now available. OK. And uh, SVG radial gradient is something MacDo implemented. Uh, he did linear gradient last month. So this month, he came out again with another banger, radial gradient. And you can see some examples of us rendering radial gradient here. Uh, there, and, and we support, I think, all of the different modes and, and settings you can render in. Um, and that's really cool. So thank you, MacDo, for <laughs> implementing all the gradients. I think I think he was on a mission to implement all the possible gradients in the web engine. And I'm not sure if he completed that or if there are any remaining gradients. Uh, if so, I'm sure he'll go hunt them down too. Uh, anyway, um, here's something I did this month. Uh, I increased our subpixel precision. So uh, CSS and the layout system now uses 64-bit floating point instead of 32-bit. And uh, it fixes a lot of rounding problems and um, like errors getting accumulated in various layouts, uh, especially on sites that do things like uh, set put three things next to each other and say that the width is like 33.33333333%. Uh, and then it expects those to add up perfectly to 100%. And with 32-bit floats, that didn't always work. But with 64-bit floats, it tends to work out. Uh, but of course, it uses more memory uh, and, and more processing power to some extent, and it's not ideal. And other um, production engines use fixed point math, and that's something we might want to do in the future. But since the immediate um, broken layouts problem has been solved by switching to 64-bit, we can defer on um, switching to fixed point math because it's less of a pressing issue now. 
Um, but yeah, this is this is pretty sweet actually. Fixed a lot of websites. I also wrote a new test runner this month, which uh, reuses the uh, web content rendering process instead of spawning a new one for every test. And um, on my personal machine, all the layout tests now for LibWeb run in less than one second. Uh, previously, it would take maybe 14 seconds, 15 seconds. Um, and that's just on my machine. On our CI system, which runs on uh, GitHub Actions or Azure, um, the tests would frequently take like 10 minutes, um, which was a pretty big chunk of CI cycle time. Um, so uh, that has been cut down to less than one minute. And um, we've cut basically 10 minutes off our cycle time, which is pretty amazing. And uh, it frees us up to add a lot more tests, which was the reason I started working on this, because I started feeling bad that for every new test I add, uh, we're adding like a couple of seconds to the CI cycle time. But now they run way, way faster. So we are free to add tons of new tests. Uh, and one small difference with the new runner also is that it doesn't stop on failure. The, the previous runner would uh, stop immediately if it hit a failure and just dump a diff of the expectation and the actual result. But the new runner would just keep going so that uh, if you uh, upload a PR, then um, if there are any failures, you will see the diff for all of the failures, not just the first one. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. I'm really happy about this. All right. Uh, responsive images, another uh, new feature that we got in this month. Um, I implemented the early stuff, like setting up source set and sizes attributes, and I rewrote the HTML image loading um, so that it follows basically the way it's laid out in the HTML spec. And that gives us a lot of new functionality where we can uh, load uh, images with different scales and different um, pixel dens dens density <laughs> and things like that. Um, and we have that selection algorithm that we're supposed to have. Um, CSS, however, still uses the old image loading. We have to port that um, to use this mechanism so they can share code. Unfortunately, uh, the, the specifications don't actually share the logic for this, even though the browser totally should. Um, so there's an open issue in the CSS um, working group for like unifying the way the image loading works across HTML and CSS. But um, we're going to have to figure out some way to do that. We can't wait for the spec to, to catch up. Uh, but that's that's the task that remains to be done. Uh, and then Andy uh, went and improved upon my code. And uh, when I first wrote it, I, I took a bunch of the spec steps and just put fix me, do this later. Uh, and Andy went and did a bunch of those things later. So uh, really fleshed out like media query support in the sizes attribute and stuff like that. So thank you, Andy, for uh, for working on responsive images. Um, oh, speaking of the CI, by the way, uh, we also had a bunch of time being spent on the WASM test runner in our CI. And I was just so curious why it had to run for um, 10 minutes or so. Um, or I guess actually it was, it was more, more like um, five, six minutes usually, but a fairly long time still. And it turned out that it was just uh, throwing exceptions in the WASM tests. And then we would very eagerly generate like this beautiful, rich stack trace for every exception. Even though nobody ever inspected that stack trace, we would still uh, take the time to generate it for every exception. And I think um, Ali said we had about 20,000 exceptions getting thrown um, during the WASM test suite. And um, we ended up spending a lot of time on CI just generating these beautiful stack traces. So um, I went and I made those lazy. And uh, that cut, I think, five minutes off of the uh, test wasm uh, runtime on CI, which was uh, about half of the, um, the runtime. So I, I may have the numbers a little bit fudged, but <laughs> it was it was a big impact. And I, this together with the new test runner for LibWeb, uh, cut about um, 15 minutes off of uh, CI time, which is really, really nice. Um, anyway, moving on. And then um, I just have this kind of 
um, grab bag of miscellaneous things because there has been a lot of stuff going on in the Ladybird browser engine land uh, as usual. So a bunch of layout fixes have been uh, going in this month. Um, myself, um, Alexander, and Andy have been working a lot on layout in various places. We have tons of improvements in block layout, flex layout, grid layout, and table layout. Uh, I think even inline layout got some fixes. And um, they're very like small little things, but together they just make the web look so much better when you see their, uh, the compounding effect of all those fixes together. Um, and I also fixed a whole bunch of garbage collector issues. Um, I added a debug mode for myself where I could find uh, a lot of problems and went and tr tracked down all of them until uh, until I could find no more. So that has been really positive as well. Haven't seen a GC crash in a long time. Um, Performance.measure and I think performance.clear measures as well. A new API we added this month uh, from the web platform. It was implemented by Luke, uh, who also did double click events, which we didn't have before. I forget which website that was for, but um, but some website needed double click events. Um, and we also had an issue where we were spamming the change event. When you were typing into an input field, we would uh, send out the change event for every keystroke. And that was a huge slowdown on websites that did JavaScript logic, like a lot of JavaScript and a response to the change event. Doing that on every keystroke turned out to be pretty obnoxious. So uh, Stellar7, I want to say it was, who went and uh, made it so that we only do it when we're supposed to, which is when you uh, switch focus out of the uh, input field. Um, some other awesome stuff this month. Sam has done a bunch of work on the CSS parser to improve the way we um, make use of our code generators. So uh, we can rely more on um, like code generated from metadata we have about CSS properties and uh, rely less on handwritten parsing. Uh, still a lot of handwritten parsing, but uh, the more we can do with code generation, the better, I think. Uh, Sam also did a bunch of stuff on the get computed style, uh, keeps increasing our coverage of properties, and that's really nice as well. Um, and we have a new date format that we support. Uh, it turned out that Discord uses this weird format where they have like the full name of the month followed by the what you see here. And uh, Luke added support for that so that we can, um, there's some like panel on Discord when you're logged in that breaks if we don't support this. So thank you, Luke, for doing that. Uh, and to everybody else for all the little bits and pieces here and there uh, that you've worked on, there's, there's so many different things. If you wanna see everything, you have to go and look in the uh, commit log, but uh, tons of stuff. I think we had like 400 commits or something like that in the, just in LibWeb alone this month. So really, really cool. Uh, and now I thought that's a bunch of slides. So let's uh, also take a look at the browser and load some websites so we can see where it's at. Okay, now let's load some real live websites. The first one we're gonna take a look at is shopify.com. So this month I was using Shopify to um, find issues and drive development a little bit because it's a complex modern website and uh, this is where we're at now. You can see uh, CSS animations in action uh, fading in this um, these images here. And this here is an SVG as image, I think. Um, or if that one isn't, then there are many here who are. Um, we also have uh, CSS variables and pseudo elements being used to generate these gradients that we see. And uh, there's various issues on this page that we fixed this month. And as you can see, many issues remain, but we have made really good progress on this website. When we started the month, it was fairly simple, uh, very colorless and full of gaps. And uh, it's something we're gonna continue working on, but uh, this is uh, Shopify at the moment. Another site that we used a bit was uh, Stripe, which um, also um, didn't even load at the start of the month because of garbage collector bugs but uh, now it actually comes up and it's fairly decent rendering 
and um, we can see SVGs here again, uh, same down here. Lots of grid layouts going on. And this over here is actually not an image, but uh, this is a bunch of grids and SVGs. And we're doing a fairly good job of it, although there are blemishes in the layout. Uh, lots of stuff to do. But uh, Stripe, it's a very complex modern website. Another great example for um, for us to, to um, work with in the engine. Um, and then I think last month I mentioned Wikipedia. We were getting close to a good layout again. And I'm happy to report that we now have a great layout on Wikipedia. The uh, various CSS grid issues have been fixed. And Wikipedia is now perfectly usable. We can even go and read about Serenity OS, I think, if we wanted to. Um, very, very nice. So big thanks to Alex for fixing the all of the various grid issues. Um, Alex has been doing a great job with layout this month. Really, really, um, really, really taking off, and that's awesome. Um, oh, uh, something that was really fun for me to work on, which I spent a bunch of time on, was uh, the CSS Zen Garden. And if you're old like me, you remember when this thing came out. I think it was in like 2003 or something like that. Um, and this was the first time I saw really like what was possible with CSS. And I think it was for many people. It was a demo of, hey, here's how you can do web layout with CSS instead of just HTML with tables and frames. Um, and they have a whole bunch of different layouts. You can you can swap the CSS uh, here on the um, on the right side, and um, it's all the same HTML, but different um, different CSS to to lay out the page. And um, this one in particular, I remember uh, being so impressed by it. So I spent time this month just getting it right, and that was very rewarding. And there are still a, a small number of blemishes that you might notice if you are really, really, really observant, but. Uh, um, it, on the whole, it looks pretty good. And actually, this gives me an opportunity to show you just how nice the um, page zoom has gotten also. I feel like this is such a sweet feature. We just need to make it faster. But the fact that this works now, when there was a time when we couldn't zoom in and out at all, we were stuck at a static size. Uh, really great work by Sam and everybody else who worked on um, like CSS Pixel to device pixel conversion stuff. Um, oh, one final thing that I wanted to showcase was uh, I like to visit other browsers sometimes. And uh, this month, we've made great progress on the Firefox website. Uh, here you can see the download Firefox <laughs> um, button was animating in a little bit. Uh, these here are SVGs as image, I think. and. Look at that. <laughs> Get the latest Firefox animating in from the side. Actually, that's I'm probably above that, but uh, um, trust me, it animated in from the side. Uh, <laughs> let's let's do that again. I'll just reload the page, and we can see. Oh, oh, there she comes. <laughs> um, it's pretty cool. Just a lot of nice stuff. And oh, I was actually also working on another. Um, another fellow browser website, the Flow Browser, uh, which is a um, closed source um, alternative browser engine as well. Uh, and I spent some time this month making their website look pretty good. Um, the, the key remaining thing is the stuff up here looks a bit of a mess, <laughs> but uh, the rest of the page is kind of nice, although it's a little bit slow to scroll. Um, especially when I'm at full screen like this and recording video at the same time. But we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that, those were some websites I wanted to take a look at. OK, that's everything I wanted to show you today. So thank you so much for watching the video and staying up to date with the project. Uh, if you would like to come chat, we all hang out on the Serenity OS Discord server. There's a link to that in the video description below. And if you would like to sponsor development of Ladybird, there are links for that in the video description as well. All right. Thank you again, and I will see you all next time. Bye.